The moment you decide to have your own business, you also decide to take on a bunch of new roles, whether you want to or not. Bookkeeper, accountant, administrative, manager, visionary, creative, social media expert, marketer, and copywriter. Yep, whether you realize it or not, want to or not, love it or not, if you want to be in business, you need to know how to write copy. Your business literally cannot exist without it. And yet so many coaches, practitioners, and other small business owners never give their copywriting skills a second thought. And then they're stumped when their business is struggling to take off, when they're not building an engaged audience, when they're not creating a connection-based community. It all comes back to copy. In this Copywriting Crash Course podcast series, I'm covering the ins and outs of writing good copy for your small business, even if you're not technically a quote-unquote good writer. In this episode, we're talking about some of the most common mistakes you might be currently making in your copy and simple fixes you can start making today. So stay tuned. Hey there, I'm Sean Miner, and this is Unstuck Entrepreneur. I'm a former nutritionist who turned a struggling, stressful nutrition practice into a thriving, freedom-filled online business where I work from home in my sweatpants while reaching and helping thousands of people all at the same time. Now I'm obsessed with showing other heart-centered coaches, practitioners, and solopreneurs how to build a business and life they love. Consider this podcast your safe space to learn both the inner work and practical strategies required to build the impactful, profitable business of your dreams. No hustle, grind, or long hours required. That's right, hustle culture, not welcome here. Let's get into today's session. Hey, hey there, friends. Welcome back to the Unstuck Entrepreneur Podcast. So happy to have you here. Grateful for your support. As always, it really, truly does mean so very much to me. All right, we are heading into the second episode of the Copywriting Crash Course series that I'm doing here on the show. So if you haven't listened to last week's episode, no big deal. Uh, You don't need it for this episode necessarily, but do make sure you go back and check it out after you're done with this one because it will all start coming together and making sense if you get the full experience. Today, we're talking about mistakes, and these are not just like things I'm pulling out of the air or things I'm just assuming are happening or things other people are saying are happening. These are legitimate things that I am seeing in the space that we here are all in, in this coaching, wellness, uh, service provider type space. I know it because I see it. I look at your websites. I look at your social media posts. I am part of your newsletters. I am in the space. And this is what I am seeing. And I want to share this with you, not to make you feel bad about your copy, because You don't know any different, and when you were writing the copy, you were doing the best that you could do, but to give you some ideas of where you can enhance some things, change some things up, do some simple uh, tweaks to improve your copy, and of course, along the way, learn, and this is part of the entire process of being an entrepreneur, of being a small business owner doing this thing, is that you just keep learning and growing. And as you learn and grow, which is like this daily experience, then you do better and you keep improving and you keep evolving. And then it's this ever growing, ever changing cyclical process of business. That's what we're going to do today. I do want to let you know an update. The Copy for Coaches workshop that I promised you in the last episode is coming up. There is a wait list at seanminer.com slash copy, C-O-P-Y. That is where you will get the details of this workshop. It's a live workshop. You, me, some of your friends, we're all going to get together and it is a workshop. It's not a webinar. It's not a masterclass. It's not something you can just kind of have playing in the background and sort of listen to when you want to. It is a workshop and it is designed to greatly, greatly improve and enhance your copywriting skills, your messaging, and your brand voice so that you are clearly communicating to the right people 
and creating a connection with those people through your words. And when you do that, you start selling more things. It's that simple, right? So we got to start there. We got to go back to the basics and really actually learn the basics probably for the first time intentionally learning the basics so that you can grow and evolve and enhance this part of your business, which will grow the rest of your business 100%. So if you want to stay in the know and get the updates on that and get first dibs at a spot to the workshop, it will be capped at the number of attendees. As always, I want this to be an intimate group. I want it to be a workshop where we're going back and forth. We're doing, we're sharing, we're asking questions, we're doing all this stuff. So it will be intimate, and this is your chance to get in on that before anyone else knows about it. So seanminer.com slash copy will be your place for that. Let's get into some of these mistakes. Now, as I'm talking about these, I really want you to come at this with a very open mind and a very clean slate and being willing to look at your work and look what you have out there from this objective place to where you can see from an outsider's perspective if some of this might be going on. I feel like when we have created content for our business, we're rightfully so very protective of it, very proud of it, and you should be. Please, absolutely, that does not change or go away here. But again, we can always improve. I just rewrote like 80% of the copy in my entire business. I've just spent the past few months doing that. And it's way better. And I'm really proud of it. But it's not that like what it was before wasn't good or I wasn't proud of it or now I'm like embarrassed of it or anything. It's just I'm evolving and my business is evolving and it will forever be doing that. And the same thing goes for you and your business. So please take what I'm saying with this like objective sense of like, can I see how this is playing out in my business and my copy instead of being like, oh no, I'm not doing that. Like, I don't need to worry about that. I'm not doing that. Because again, I'm not making this stuff up. This is what I am seeing. And to be totally honest, seeing the amount of this kind of stuff that we're going to talk about today was a big driving reason why I started really diving into copywriting and doing the courses and doing the work to get certified so that I could help you guys with this stuff because I'm seeing it. I'm it's like everywhere. It's it's rampant and I really want to change that for you cuz it really does make a huge difference in your business. All right. Number one, your copy isn't specific enough. And I've talked about this many times here in various episodes of the show, but it needs to be said again because the what really happens, I think, is there's a couple things. First of all, we're worried that if we get too specific, then we end up excluding people that we ultimately would want to help or would work with. But when you stay too general, then you exclude everybody because no one actually understands and gets what you do and who you work with and how it can help them. And so that idea of not wanting to exclude people by being too specific is actually doing the exact opposite of what you're trying to do, what you're trying to not have happen, I guess. So that's the first thing. And then I think the second thing is that you just have not spent nearly enough time, energy, and effort to really dive into your messaging. Your messaging drives your specificity. And we talked about this last week, but I will remind you, it's like, think of your messaging as the ingredients of a recipe. So let's say I want to bake a cake. I can throw some flour in, some butter, some, I don't know what else is in cake. I don't really eat cake. Um, But I can throw some ingredients in at random and hope it works. And that's what you're doing if you haven't taken the proper care for your messaging. Or I can know the exact right amounts of every single ingredient. I can know how much flour, how much sugar, how much butter, 
I can know that this works in, with, in the altitude, this doesn't work in altitude. I can make all these adjustments. I can add chocolate chips. I can add berries as these options. But I know exactly what I need in order to make the perfect cake. And that is what happens when you have really dialed in your messaging. And guess what? Okay, so let's just think about this. How much more confident are you in the results of your cake and how it's going to taste and how it's going to look, how good it's going to be, how much you're going to enjoy it? You know that cake is going to be awesome because you followed the ingredients, you followed the recipe. If you're just winging it and you're throwing some stuff in and you have no idea if it's the right stuff and you're just going to put it in and hope for the best, your confidence level is like 50-50 at the very best. It might even be less than that. Your cake could actually turn out. But more than likely, your cake is not going to be very good. You might pull it out of the oven and it is flat, it's hard, it's too sweet, it's too salty, it just doesn't taste good, it didn't work. Right, so think about that confidence level of having that exact recipe, those exact ingredients versus just winging it and hoping for the best. Big difference in confidence. And I think we can all agree we'd love a little bit more confidence when it comes to our businesses overall, but even just talking about our offers, whether those offers are free or paid, we'd all just love a little more confidence. And that messaging will get you there. So we got on a little messaging tangent. Let's bring it back to your copy not being specific enough. So when it's not specific, it's not clear. Specificity breeds clarity. And you need clarity to get that person to take the next step. Whatever that next step is, again, we're not always talking about a paid offer here. It could just as easily be um, checking out your website or going to your blog post or signing up for your freebie or, yeah, purchasing a big coaching package from you, all of the above. We need to think about that in every single thing we are trying to communicate with our people. So when it's not clear, it's automatically a no. Okay, when it is not clear, it's automatically a no. And your lack of specificity makes it not clear. When the reader can't see themselves in your copy, it's not specific enough. If they don't know for sure with 100% certainty that you are talking to them, then it's not specific enough. And this also brings into the conversation, the topic of emotions, because a lack of specificity also means lack of emotion. And copy in your business is incredibly emotional. It should bring up the good emotions and the emotions they're trying to avoid, the frustration, the anger, the overwhelm the confusion, whatever it is that your client is currently going through on an emotional level, your copy, the words that you are using in your business should bring that up. And not like we want them to feel even more frustrated than before they started reading something from us. Not that, but just more so a reminder of where they are, what they're experiencing, and that there's a way out. There is another path. And then on the same token, even in the same set of copy, in the same social media post or whatever you're doing, you are also bringing up the emotion that is possible for them, the excitement, the hope, the happiness, the joy, the peace, whatever it is that they are in search of. Like, I think we all would love to make people a little bit happier, a little bit more peaceful, give them hope, make them excited. That's why we're coaches. And if we have the ability to do that by working with them, then we want to make sure they know that. We want to really let them truly experience what it will be like when they are done working with us, when that problem is solved, that symptom is gone, whatever it is that you do. So really the fix here is to talk directly. And I say talk because 
This is something we're going to get into later in the series. But writing copy is very much like talking to your bestie. That's how we want to approach it. And so when I say write, people like, I have to write something. But if I just say talk or chat or whatever, then it has this different kind of mindset around it. And it makes more sense to those who are scared of writing or don't like writing, whatever the case may be. So again, talk directly to the needs, wants, problems, symptoms, goals, desires, struggles, and fears of your dream client. Speak to it all. Really paint the picture of here's where you are and it doesn't have to be this way. There is hope. There is another way. way. Here's where you could be. Here's how you can get there. And um, this is how your life could look. This is how things will change. It's that point A to point B narrative. And again, it doesn't have to be like poking the bear, poking this problem they have. It's not that. It is done with compassion and understanding and care. And also, there's another way. There's a solution. You don't have to be stuck here. Let me guide you towards your next step to where you want to be. It really can be done with a very compassionate caring um, lens. And that's what we're going for in our copy. All right, number two, your copy is boring. Sorry, I love you all so very much. Your copy is boring. Um, It's very vanilla. And in today's world, it very much needs to be like double chocolate fudge with peanut butter swirls and cookie chunks kind of energy. That's what we're looking for with your copy. Right now, it's vanilla and that doesn't cut it. Um, You just, there is this, and I think we can all agree, fire hose of content out there right now. We are all in the middle of a fire hose of constant content coming our way. There are masses of coaches out there, which is great. There are still plenty of clients for you to work with. Everyone needs a coach. This world would be a better place if everyone had someone they could talk to and someone to guide them to what they want. So don't let that scare you that there are tons of coaches out there, but there are, and that's the reality. And with that means that if you have a boring vanilla copy, you get lost in the sea. You don't make any waves and you won't get the kind of attention and interest and engagement that you deserve. You deserve the engagement for the work that you are doing and the content that you are putting out, but it's going to keep coming up with nothing and you're going to get more and more frustrated by all this content you're creating and it's not doing anything or reaching anybody or all this stuff. We can complain about the algorithm all day long. That's fine. But you know what? If you have double chocolate fudge with peanut butter swirl and cookie chunks copy, then you're going to get noticed. And that's what we want. That's what happens when you put some spice in your copy. And what it really takes is just caring, just spending a little bit more time with the words you're using. Time and intentionality go a long way. Everything we're going to talk about in this series will help. What we'll be doing in the workshop is going to change everything for you. So don't worry, we'll get there for sure. But one thing that I think is really important to know about boring copy is that the reason that it's boring is usually because there's no personality to it. And I know you all have great personalities, but you're not putting that into the words that you are using for your business. And it might be because you feel like it's a business, I'm a coach, I need to showcase my authority and my knowledge and my skill and be professional and be polished and be perfect. So I need to make sure I'm saying the right things, which if I were to put my personality into it, then that would go out the window because I actually like to make jokes and I swear all the time and I'm actually not really that serious at all. I'm always kind of being goofy or whatever the case may be for your personality. And I think that it 
may seem like if you put your personality into your copy that it's going to um, downplay the professionalism. But what it's really doing is making it so you sound like everyone else. And when you sound like everyone else, you're not getting anywhere because everyone sounds like that. So there's nothing interesting or different or exciting about you. There's nothing that makes people say, oh, yeah, that's the person that does this thing or always says this or always makes me laugh when I read their social posts or their emails. You lose that thing that makes you unique and you do have that thing. We all have it. And that uniqueness, that personality is what keeps people reading. And that's really the ultimate goal. We want people to read our emails, to read our social media posts, to check out our websites, uh, to look at our freebie and download it. We want people to stay engaged. We want people to read, to communicate, to connect with us. And that doesn't happen if you sound like everyone else. It happens when you show up as you. Personality-packed copy wins every single time. Every time. And so like I said, one of the best things that you can do is write like you talk, like casually talk, not like you're on stage at giving some presentation, but write like you casually would have this conversation with a friend. Write that out. And if you don't know if you're doing that or not, read your work out loud. So write it out. Let's say if you're writing an email to your list and you're done and you're about to send it, before you do, read it out loud and see if it sounds like what you would say out loud to a friend or to a client you feel really comfortable with. That's how you know that you are writing personality-packed copy versus boring vanilla copy. That is one really great way. And then another thing is to make sure that you are, and this kind of happens naturally when you do this, when you um, are writing like you're talking to your best friend, but you use words that you say and you use a cadence like you would speak. In my real life, as I speak, I don't always speak in complete sentences. I speak in fragments sometimes, especially to like bring home a point. So I do that in my copy. Uh, I say um and so a lot, like an elongated um or so is how I speak, IRL. So I put that in my copy. If I do some things like a little aside, like I would say just kind of under my breath or just a little quieter. I put it in either parentheses or in italics, like a little aside. And you pick that up when you're reading it too. And it becomes a conversation. And that is a whole different ballgame for your business. And that is what makes you unique. That's what gets people excited when your name pops up in their inbox or as they're scrolling social media and keeps them reading, keeps them engaged, and eventually gets them to take the next step with you. Okay? Number three, you're making your copy about you. This is something that I think a lot of people are like, no, I'm not, or I'm st- I was told I was supposed to share my story. Yes, And also, it's not really about you. Nothing that you write in your business is about you, including your About Me page on your website. Crazy, right? It says about me, but it's not about you. It is about your dream client. And even your About page on your website is who you are and what you do as it relates to your dream client. Yes, you can share personal stories, you can share mistakes you've made, journeys you've been on, lessons you've learned, all that stuff, but only if your dream client will be able to see themselves in that story and that you make sure you bring it back to your dream client directly, quickly. So this is where having a longer story and um, really playing it out. And yes, it totally relates to your dream client. And it's something that you went through that is similar to what they're going through. So they can see themselves in your story and all that stuff. Yes. But if it's too long and you're not bringing it back to them quickly, they'll lose interest. 
even if it relates to them, because we all, as human beings, are selfish. We're self-centered. We care about us as we should. And yes, we like to hear about other stories and things like that. But when we're in the thick of a problem and we need to find a solution, then we need it to be about us. And that's totally okay and understandable, but consider that as someone who is talking to another human wanting to help them. Keep them at the center of it all, even on your about page. And I'll probably get some pushback here because first of all, you're told to share stories and anecdotes and lessons and mistakes. And yes, I do that too. You guys see me do it all the time. I do it here on the show too, but I do it in my emails and social media all over the place. So yes, like I said, you can and should do that. It is really important to create that sense of relatability and like your show your humanness. That it's also really important to establish that connection And also your authority, like you've been through it or you've helped other people through it or something like that. So authority is important in those stories as well. But again, it's got to come back to the reader quickly, quickly. So use those anecdotes as a way to establish an even deeper relationship to that person and then clearly state what it has to do with them why that story matters to them, why that mistake matters to them, why they should care. Keep it about them. It makes a huge difference. And as a quick tip, this is actually something I saw in an email I received um, a couple weeks ago from someone in this general space, general coaching online business space. And in that email, it was actually a sales email, so an enrollment email for a coaching program. I counted and there were 27 I and me written and 12 you and your. So if you want to know if you're talking too much about yourself, count your I's and me's and you's and yours. And you and your should always be way more than the I and me. I hope that makes sense. It's kind of hard to say this out loud. So Keep tabs on the count of the times you're using I and me versus you and your. And make sure you and yours always way more. Okay, I'm going to try to get through the next two quickly because my voice is threatening to go. (laughs) I did a hike this morning that was extremely, extremely cold. I think it's the coldest hike I've been on. Uh, so far this winter and that cold dry air that is Colorado and breathing it in heavily always makes me want to lose my voice. So I should not have scheduled to do this after that, but here we are. Number four, your copy is pushy. Most of us have a fear of being pushy and salesy and annoying and all that stuff that we have around selling, quote unquote selling. But the funny thing is that because you haven't learned how to write good copy, what you do write comes across as pushy or salesy. And this is obviously not intentional, but what it really comes down to is that you simply haven't learned how else to try to quote unquote convince someone, because I do not like using that word and that's not what we're doing with ethical copywriting, but you don't know how else to convince someone to do something. That's the only thing that you know. That's the only resource you have because that's how a lot of the rest of the world works and a lot of other things we do in life work. If we're trying to get your kid to put the laundry in the hamper, then you might be a little pushy (laughs) when you're trying to do that. So that's just our kind of our natural way. And so... When it comes time to promote a paid offer or promote a freebie, you're saying things like, hey, you should totally buy this thing or download it or listen to it. You'll love it. I promise. Trust me. It's so great. Here's what you're, you'll get. It's, it's really, it's awesome. You should, you should totally get it. I know you're not actually saying that, but this is my example just off the top of my head. And I know that you do more than that, but it comes with the same kind of sentiment. But if you were to really take the time and intention 
to connect with your people on a deeper level by being specific, by drawing out emotion, by painting a picture for them and infusing it all with your personality, everything we've talked about today. And then all you're doing is putting in front of them and offer to take them to the next best step for them. That's all you're doing. And it doesn't feel pushy or sleazy or salesy or annoying or any of those things. And it, it comes across way better for your people than what you're doing now. Because as much as you don't want to be those things, when you don't know what else to say and you haven't put the time and intention into your messaging and learning like the general rules of copywriting and writing good, intentional, compassionate copy, then that's what you get even though you don't want it to be that and you're really trying hard not to be that, by way of not knowing another thing to do or say, that's what happens. So just remember to always lead with the transformation. You are in the business of providing a transformation of some sort. Everyone's is different. So getting clear on that transformation, like crystal, crystal, crystal clear on that transformation and speaking to that over and over and leading with that because that is where your dream clients experience transformation as well. And that is the whole goal here. So really continue to lead with that. And then there is no need to say, here's this thing. You should download it. You'll totally love it. I trust me. I promise. It'll be so great. Um, And again, not that you're doing that, but in a roundabout way, I see a lot of that. All right. Last one. You are not writing enough copy. So there's a few different meanings to this. We're going to go over them both. First of all, you need to write copy, powerful, good copy regularly in your business because no amount of amazing, great, wonderful copy is going to keep your momentum if you decide to ghost your business. So what I'm really saying here is you need to be consistent. You can't uh, lack consistency and have good copy and expect that good copy to carry you. So they go hand in hand. Keep in mind and continue to remind yourself of this, that the vast, vast, vast majority of people need to hear from you multiple times before they're going to take the next step, before they're going to take action, even if that action is signing up for a freebie. They need to hear it over and over again. And even if your copy is incredible and amazing and connective and emotional and all these things that we're talking about in this series, it still needs to happen on repeat in order for that person to take action. Very rarely does it happen on the very first time, and especially not if it's a paid offer. And of course, once you are more confident in your copywriting, which is what we're doing here, it's going to be so much easier to write for your business, to continue connecting with them and to do so regularly. And the more copy you write, the better you get. It really is one of those things where if you just keep doing it, especially once you know the basics, once you have the process down and you know what you're really after, it just gets better and better and better the more you do it. So then the second meaning of this, you're not writing enough copy, is that you're not writing enough copy on each piece of content. So your emails are too short, your sales pages are too short, there's almost nothing on your freebie landing pages, your websites are barren. And I think this comes from a few different places. First of all, not knowing what to say or how to say it or you know, really even knowing if it's worth your time to write more on your website or on your sales pages or whatever. And then also having this belief that people aren't going to read it anyway. They don't want to take the time to read long sales pages or long emails or anything like that. So why bother? I need to keep it short and sweet. So I think there's a combination of that going on for a lot of you. And so, of course, the big question here then is, well, how long do they need to be then? John, tell me, tell me the exact amount of characters I need to write on my sales page, on my landing page, in my emails, and I'll do it. Well, obviously, you know this is coming. 
It depends. It depends. But really, the answer is this. As long as it takes to coach the reader into taking the action you want them to take. So if it's an email and you want them to go listen to your podcast episode, then you are going to write the number of words that it takes to really showcase the transformation that will happen when they listen to that episode. Yes, you are even going down as deep as figuring out the before and after of them before listening to the episode and after listening to the episode. So that means what they're going to learn, how they're going to be able to implement it into their lives, what's going to change because of that, why it's so valuable. It's the transformation. And so that could be by way of a story. It could be by way of just setting the stage of where they're at now without this information. It could be setting the stage after they have this information and How they can get there is by way of your podcast episode. There's a lot of things you can do, but your email needs to be as long as it needs to be to convey that message, to share that, to provide that experience, and then get them on the way to their next step. That's it. There is no hard and fast rule. Same thing goes with the sales page. Same thing goes with your website, which on your website, it's very much about continuing to take more actions on your website. So going to the about page, going to the services page, getting on your email list by way of a free resource, listening to your podcast, finding you on social media. There's a lot of things, a lot of actions you want people to take from your website, but you have to have the messaging and the copy there to take them on that journey. They're not going to do it themselves. So that requires more words than you are probably using right now. And the thing is, when that's what you're doing, what's happening is you're keeping your dream clients in limbo. They're not making a decision one way or the other. When you have enough copy, when you have enough words, when you've really created that message and that space for them to take the next step, well, then they have to make a decision. Yes, I want to go listen to this podcast episode or no, I don't. If it's just this little blurb about what you're talking about in your episode, then it's a, I'm just not going to think about this at all. I'm not going to make a decision one way or other. I'm going on to the next thing in my inbox, the next thing in my life. But if you provide enough information by way of your message, then you get them to a place where they can make the best decision for themselves. And that's what we really want to do here. What we don't want is to just keep them in this limbo because then you're not getting anywhere with anyone, even if it is a no. That's way better than limbo. And then just to briefly touch on the assumption that a lot of people have out there that people won't read it, they don't want to read long things, don't have time to read long things. So why bother? Because I know that's how a lot of people feel. That couldn't be further from the truth. There are actually a lot of people out there that need that many words to get to the point where they can make a decision. And we're going to talk about the four different types of decision makers in the workshop and how to write for all four. But a lot of those people are people that read every word, no matter how long it is. They will read every word and they need to read every word before they feel comfortable making a decision one way or the other. So long form sales pages speak to those people. If the sales page is too short, you've lost them. They are Xing out. They don't have enough information to make a decision one way or the other. And yes, there are absolutely those people too who just kind of skim through, read the headlines, read the subheads, and can make a decision from there. Those people exist as well. But they are used to skimming. They are okay with that. And so now you've appealed to both people. You have thought about those people and cared for both of them by way of one sales page because you've made it long enough for the people who need to read every single word to make a decision, and you still have made the space for those people who just skim. And again, these are things we're going to get into in a lot more detail in the workshop, but wouldn't you rather not exclude 
one big chunk of the population in these types of decision makers, that's important. So you need to use the right amount of words to clearly communicate and connect and create an emotional experience, create a journey for your people, your readers, so they can make an educated decision one way or the other instead of just Xing out and never thinking about it again. That is how long your copy needs to be. So that could be 10 words, that could be 10,000 words. There is no hard and fast rule. Um, I will go over some guidelines though in the workshop that you can use, but no hard and fast rule. Okay, with that, I am going to end here before I completely lose my voice. And we'll be back next week with another episode of the Copy Crash Course series. And don't forget seanminer.com slash copy to get on the wait list for the workshop. I don't have an exact date set, but I will tell you it's going to be in the beginning of March 2023. So only a few weeks from now, if you're listening to this close to when it airs. So it's not like it's like, forever in the future. It's coming up quick. I just have to solidify some a few things and I'll have that date set. And then as soon as I do, I will send an email to everyone on the wait list. You get first dibs if you want to be there, if you want to save your seat before I offer it to someone else. Okay. So with that, head over there, get on the list, and I will see you in the next episode for another copy crash course. Until next time, take care. Hey friend, real quick before you go, don't forget to head over to my website and take the quiz to find out your solopreneur personality type. I've created a super fun, super informative two minute quiz that will show you which one of the four solopreneur personality types you fall into. Could it be the boss, the socialite, the visionary, or the supporter? Which one are you? Not only is it just fun to know more about yourself, especially as it relates to your business, but it's also really important information so you can be sure that you're building a business that works for you based on your energy, your personality, and your desires. Did you ever take those quizzes from the Cosmopolitan magazine back in the day? It's kind of like that, but with actual solid questions and real helpful tips and advice at the end. You can find the What's Your Solopreneur Personality Type quiz right on the homepage of my website at seanminer.com. Head there now to take the quiz, then let me know over on Instagram at Unstuck Entrepreneur what your type is. I'll see you over there.